Hi there, and welcome back to this third lesson. Today we will learn how to use a DXFDWGIS file as reference for our drawing session. Then we will see the 2D magnetic grids, and we will use again the curved envelopes, the curtain wall, and the roofs. We will see a real application of the objects that we learned from the previous lessons, but we will also use a DWG files as reference for our drawing session. So let's open the object drawing menu. And here from the 2D graphics section, we will click on the DXF button. Now by clicking on the workspace, we will see the windows from which we can select our reference file. Now the software will ask to us the scaling factor value. This factor is necessary in order to convert the DXF DWG drawing units into meters. In this case, the original drawing is expressed in meters, so we will leave the value 1. If instead the drawing was expressed in centimeters, we will have inserted a value of 0 0.01. Now by clicking Confirm, the importation process will start. Then we will have the DXF drawing linked to the mouse cursor. And with one click, we will lock the drawing to the workspace. Now by clicking on the model, will become available the properties panel of this object. So we can modify again the scaling factor. We can load a new reference file, but this process will delete the previous DXF file with this option, we will apply to this model the original drawing aspect. Also here, we can assign a group or typology under the classification section. We can modify the position by changing its coordinates. We can lock this drawing to the workspace, so it can't be selected. We can make it visible from the 3D view. And of course, we will have the customization option. For example, I want to change the line color in green. I can also change the thickness of the line, and I can see the ID code of this model. And as seen before, I can also attach external files to this object. But let's start off our modeling session. We will start by inserting a vertical envelope. And we can use the snaps function in order to insert this wall exactly over our reference drawing. Eventually, we can change the alignment axis of the wall by clicking the F5 and F6 function key. Now let's insert a new vertical envelope, but this time I want to use a more advanced drawing accelerator, which is the magic wand DXFDWG. This function automatically recognizes the wall thickness by simply crossing over the wall in the cut drawing. Let's finish off by inserting all the walls for this level. Of course, we can still make any change with simple editing features. For example, they can be selected to modify their properties as now they are parametric objects. But let's continue our drawing session. We also have other uses of the accelerator for our modeling operations. This is the magnetic grid. The operation is the same, so select the object and click on the drawing area. And then we need to define column and row settings. So you can type in the measurement directly, column of 4 meters and a vertical distribution in row, for example, two rows of 5 meters. To confirm, we will click the OK button and notice that we have the magnetic grid anchored to the mouse cursor. In this case, we will enter it here to create an additional environment. Now, let's suppose we want to modify this magnetic grid, and in order to do so, I need to right mouse click over one of these orange arrows on the nodes. For example, I can modify the length of this line, now I can use the snaps of the workspace, but also I can write down the precise value from the keyboard. From the menu, I can also choose this option, which allows me to modify the length of the line without changing the total length of the grid. In addition, by clicking on the central node, I can also decide to divide the grid in a certain amount of equal part, for example in this case 3. Also from this menu, I can eventually unify all the cells, or even delete an entire part of the grid. Now that we have this reference grid, we can come back to the drawing session and start adding new vertical envelopes. And we can use again a magic wand as an accelerator. By simply tracing a selection rectangle, we will select our grid, choose the desired alignment axis from this box, for example the central axis, and quickly insert the solder envelopes too. And as seen before, they are fully modifiable. So for example I can make this longer, and I can also delete this one, because now I want to insert here a curved wall. And so, insert the first point, here a second point, and with a third click, I will define the curvature. 
now on the opposite side of the building, I want to delete this wall and replace it with a curtain wall. So let's select a model from the beam object library, for example this one, and then apply. Now I want to insert the starting point here. Let's contain this curtain wall also after this wall. Then just select this part of the curtain wall and delete it. Now let's open the 3D view and select our object. Because I want to invert this curtain wall in order to have the glasses outside and the metal fixture inside. Let's make other modifications. Like for example, I want to add a 20 cm offset on the left and on the right side and a 50 cm from the bottom. And insert a seal. Of course, I need to modify the material layer in order to have the same composition of the other envelopes. And also modify the thickness of the wall part. And now let's start the roofing session. This time we will use another magic wand that allow us to recognize the entire perimeter of the building. So click on the edit function and let's modify the perimeter by deleting these nodes. Then I want to rearrange the position of this vertex, insert a new node and moving it here, and let's assign an offset of 80 centimeters. Again, let's rearrange the perimeters here by moving the entire segments. Now let's start inserting the roof slopes, starting from this side, then this one, and finish with this other one. Now rearrange the pitching nodes by moving here the point 2 and here the point 1, and the same for these other slopes. And then the last one, here the point 2 and here the point 1. Now select the point 2 and change the elevation value. Now we can add the correct elevation value from here, or we can also assign a pitching percentage from here, for example 35%. For the other slopes, I can easily use the snaps just by moving the point 2 directly from the 3D view. And now we can close the editor by clicking confirm. And this is our roof on the 3D view. But of course, we need to add a small roof over our stage case. So let's define our perimeter. Again, we will assign an offset of 80 centimeters. Now convert this segment into an arc and insert the roof. Of course, we need to convert this segment as well into an arc. We need to modify the position of the point 1 and point 2, both horizontally and vertically. Now close the editor and the roof section is completed.